Okay, for example two, we have um, this problem here. So let's go ahead and try it. So now this one, we do have a variable outside. So it mostly identifies with number three from the theorem. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and, and continue. So let's write what's inside the radical um, as squares. So we have x and then we have three x being squared here minus a two being squared there to get me nine x squared and four. So that will help us to identify what is u and what is a. So now in the third statement, u squared is in front, which means that u is going to be 3x and a is going to be 2. And then du we can find by taking the derivative of this, which is 3dx. Now if you notice, we do not have a 3dx, we only have a 1dx. So let's multiply both sides of this equation by one third, and we get that the dx will be replaced with one third du. So this becomes the integral of one third du over, um, ah, we have another problem here. Let's continue there, we'll finish. So we get um, u squared minus a squared. The problem I have here is this. Notice that u equals 3x. So what is it that I plug in for x by itself? Well, you can take this expression, and since I don't have a three here, I can multiply by 1 third there. So I get 1 third u equals x. And now I have an expression to plug in for x. So I get 1 third u here as well. Now you'll notice that this one third and this one third in the denominator are going to reduce. So I will end up with just the expression one over u square root of u squared minus a squared du. And according to the third formula, um, it should come out to be arc secant. It will be 1 over a, and a was 2, and then arc secant u over a, the absolute value of u is 3x, and a is 2 plus c. So we end up with 1 half arc secant. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's just use the general rule here. So 1 over a and then the absolute value of u over a. And then if I back sub, we'll go ahead and do that. So a was 2 and then u was 3x and again a is 2 and then you have your plus c. Um, and this expression can be left like this. Um, So then you just box this and that is your final answer. Now, for example three, we also have a variable outside here. So that also makes me think I'm gonna end up with arc secant as well. However, we do need to write what's inside here with the squares to help us identify what is u and what is a. So in the constant, I can tell that that's three squared. For the variable, it will have to be the square root of x squared, so that these undo each other and I just have the x. So these two statements are in fact equivalent. Now this helps me identify that a is going to be 3 and u is going to be the square root of x. Therefore, if I take the derivative of this equation, I get 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. Or another way to write that is 1 over 2 square root of x dx. 
Now I do have the one over x, I'm sorry, the one over square root of x dx. So what I don't have is this two downstairs. So if I multiply both sides by two, I end up with this statement here. So one over square root of x dx is gonna be replaced with two du. So if I substitute this in here, and again, I need to indicate that this is just side work here, just as I need to indicate that all of this here is my side work. Okay, so I end up with one over the square root of a squared minus u squared, and then one over square root of x and the dx together will become two du. So I can take out the two, and I can even multiply one and du together. And so, interestingly enough, I don't end up with the formula that looks like arc secant. I actually end up with the formula that looks like arc sine because I no longer have variables outside. So, this will end up becoming 2 times arc sine of u over a plus c. And if I back sub, I get 2 arc sine of square root of x over three plus c. And that is actually simplified to its lowest terms, so I don't have anything else um, to do here. This is going to be my final answer. Now I'll go over the last problem here. So example four, now, do identify what is u. I am going to rewrite that inside of that square root as um, squares. So 64 is 8 squared, and then cosine squared is, of course, cosine x squared. So this helps me identify that a is 8, and u is going to be cosine of x. Now, if I take the derivative of this equation, I get that du is negative sub x dx. And I actually have all the pieces there. So negative sine x dx is going to become du. And then this is going to become a squared minus u squared, which coincidentally is also another um, arc sine. So I end up with arc sine of u over a plus c, which ends up with u being cosine of x, a being 8 plus c. And then arc sine and cosine don't undo each other, so if this was sine, I may have been able to simplify this a little bit. But it's not, so we're just going to leave it like that.